Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 5 for January the 3rd, 2021. We begin a new unit today um, entitled Jesus and Calls in His Ministry. And our topic for today taken from the Adult Quarterly is An Amazing Ministry. Our devotional reading is taken from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 1 through 11. Our background scripture is taken from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 4 and we'll be studying today from uh, Luke chapter 4 verses 14 through 22a. Our key verse reads, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That's taken from Luke chapter 4 verses 18 and 19 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to show comprehension of the meaning and significance of Jesus' inaugural sermon in Nazareth. Secondly, to show the impact of Jesus' pronouncement in Nazareth. And then thirdly, to show an aligned faith response with Jesus' call and mission. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, The Power to Proclaim. Uh, the second outline is entitled, The Prophecy to Proclaim. And then the third outline is entitled, The Platform to Proclaim. And so we certainly thank and praise God that uh, for our being here today. Happy New Year to each and every one of you and to your families. And we certainly thank and praise God that we have been allowed and uh, favored by God to be able to see uh, the year 2020 go out. And as we embark upon the year of 2021, we want to remain hopeful and confident of the Lord's word and of his promises. And uh, we want to remain hopeful. Uh, even in these days and times of this pandemic, we hope that your families are safe and and healthy. We certainly are continuing to pray God's speed, God's strength upon us all because we realize the forecast for, um, at least according to the uh, medical professionals, is uh, not good. But we want to continue to keep uh, uh, God on our minds because God has the final say of what happens uh, uh, in us and certainly around us. We have a lot to get to today. We're going to try to uh, unpack this lesson for us in a way uh, that we can understand uh, what Jesus' ministry is all about and certainly want to uh, encourage you to get your Bible and be prepared to take some notes and uh, we want to be able to encourage you to go forward in the Lord and what the Lord has called you to do. Uh, two things I want to just make mention of as we look at this lesson today, and, and this will be covered in all of uh, the fourth chapter. Uh, we certainly hope that you will read all of Luke chapter 4. But I want us to pay particular attention to, number one, how the devil works. Uh, that is in uh, that's covered in Luke chapter four, uh, beginning at at, at uh, verse one, and then as we move to our lesson today, uh, I want us to pay attention to how God works. Um, these patterns, uh, uh, I find them to be consistent uh, in terms of how the devil uh, works around us, what he is tempting us to do. And I also find the consistency uh, uh, of how God works in the pattern of his only begotten son that are relevant for us uh, because we too uh, have things that God have called us to do. But we have come through uh, quite a bit of study of the book of Matthew. But as we move to the book of Luke, I want us to pay a, a close attention to uh, Luke's account of Jesus' life because like Matthew he pays uh, considerable, uh, considerable attention to the Old Testament uh, prophecy. He pays a, a close attention to the life of Christ, the genealogy of Christ, 
and so that's very important uh, as we understand uh, this advent and as we understand the work of, of prophecy uh, as we will deal with it in this lesson today and how Jesus uses it um, the Old Testament is critical uh, as we move to the New Testament as we look for the fulfillment of prophecy those things that God has uh, um, uh, previously announced that would occur but I want to read some of this biblical context for this lesson and we're going to get uh, into our outlines but the proclamation of a special year of the Lord's favor is a reference uh, to the Jub the year of, of Jubilee uh, you can find reference in Leviticus chapter 25 verses 8 through 55 uh, Jubilee was a time when old debts were forgiven slaves freed and land returned to its original owners uh, Isaiah refers to Jubilee in the context of a restoration of Israel after the nation's enemies had humbled her. And I want, we're going to look at obviously uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 61 verse 2. But Jesus made the reference regarding the new day um, he would bring. Uh, the Apostle Paul may have been making a, uh, a Jubilee reference when comparing the new covenant. Uh, to the old covenant that's in 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 uh, verses 17 and 18 so this new covenant offered a new beginning for all humanity and the opportunity to experience spiritual rebirth uh, in Jesus Christ and we'll just stop right there uh, and so I want us to think about that uh, this year of Jubilee as we find this account in the book of Leviticus uh, uh, one of the things that the Lord was concerned about uh, in Leviticus chapter 25 was uh, uh, exploitation of one another. Um, this could be individual, this could be obviously corporate exploitation. And so as we uh, share this time of Jubilee uh, was when old debts were forgiven. I want us to stick a pin in that because as we look at what Christ came to do uh, in terms of our position or our fellowship with the Father that something was wrong uh, something had gone wrong in terms of uh, our relationship with Jesus Christ or with the Father and so Jesus Christ came to set those things uh, 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 right if you will and one of the things that he brought with him uh, uh, Jesus in his ministry was forgiveness uh, and that's very important going forward in a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The Father has forgiven us. Uh, these old debts, these old things, this past, if you will, has been accounted for uh, 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 through the blood of Jesus Christ and certainly at the cross. And so this reference to the Old Testament, uh, this year of Jubilee, is critical for us to understand. Slaves were freed. We were slaves to sin. Uh, 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 we were slaves to the devil and Christ came to set the captive free we're gonna talk about that as we go forward but let's get into this first outline entitled the power uh, to proclaim this is taken from uh, Luke chapter 4 um, verses 14 through 16 and I want to read this uh, um, from the NIV translation and if we follow this uh, as we set the tone for this uh, these verses that we are going to read as we said in Luke uh, chapter 4 beginning at verse 1 after Jesus had been tempted for 40 days by the devil he now moves to Galilee and this is where we are now as as Jesus returned from the wilderness uh, he enters, uh, he returned to Galilee uh, in verse 14. Uh, the Bible says Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit and news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. Verse 15, he was teaching in their synagogues and everyone praised him. Uh, verse 16, he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue as was his custom 
he stood up to read and we're going to stop right there uh, that's Luke chapter 4 verses uh, uh, 14 through 16 but after 40 days of fasting and prayer in the wilderness uh, Jesus returned to Galilee so the considerable impact of Jesus ministry was enabled by the tremendous power of the Holy Spirit as I said earlier I want you to watch the tone and how the Holy Spirit uh, if we go back over into Luke chapter uh, 4 beginning at verse 1 uh, this is not a part of the text but I think it's important that we understand that Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit um, uh, returned from the Jordan and was led uh, by the Spirit into the wilderness so the, the Holy Spirit led him Christ into the wilderness uh, uh, to be tempted and, and why is this relevant um, temptations uh, uh, certainly uh, these types of tests if you will of, of Christ and I, I like the way Luke presents uh, this passage uh, uh, because it Jesus goes through a period of testing or a temptation if you will prior to his uh, Galilean ministry and so I think it's important to understand as we think about the, the works of the Holy Spirit part of his plan uh, involves us going through things uh, and we're not able to always determine how long that period might be but if the Holy Spirit is leading us as Christ was led into this wilderness for a particular season uh, to go through this uh, uh, God had a specific purpose and sometimes when we think about ministry if you look at what the devil was trying to do uh, uh, with Christ uh, uh, he tempted him talking about uh, uh, he was hungry he knew Satan knew that that Christ was hungry and so he started to engage him uh, in other activities that would cause Christ to worship him uh, and, and that's very important I want you to think about the fact that if God is going to commission you what might you have to go through before Christ before God would allow you or send you into ministry and so this testing period or this trial period here uh, uh, I believe is relevant for Jesus to be confronted in this manner uh, by Satan on every level of his being in his spirit uh, in his mind and in his body uh, uh, prior to going into ministry uh, and as I think about this thing uh, the Holy Spirit uh, taking Christ there and uh, uh, the Father allowing this to happen and Jesus enduring these things that Satan has brought up on him I'm trying to help somebody to understand because I know that you may be going through some things right now that the Lord is allowing and you might be questioning him why he's doing that uh, and, and why has it been going on for so long but one of the things that we have to be mindful of is that the Holy Spirit is preparing us uh, and, I, and I want you to think about as long as we are not uh, self-inflicting ourselves uh, a part of God's character Galatians chapter 5 will help us to understand that God is long-suffering uh, he will allow things to come up on you and this pattern here that that uh, that you may see in your life uh, particularly if it is involving something that the Lord has allowed to happen to you uh, I don't want you to think that you're by yourself or that you're the first one that this has ever happened to I want you to look at Christ and what he is going through uh, uh, from Luke's perspective in, in uh, Luke chapter 4 and so now Jesus has gone through this thing and now uh, he is ready uh, uh, for ministry if you will so um, but the same power that equips every believer uh, for effective ministry uh, in power or service if you will so Jesus was no stranger to the people of Galilee people knew him uh, as the son of Joseph uh, the local carpenter but news regarding Jesus ministry ministry spread throughout Galilee so people were moved by his teaching and praised him for it 
So as we look at how uh, Jesus arrived at the synagogue on the Sabbath, as was his custom, it's important to note that Jesus made a habit of being present in the sanctuary for the teaching of God's word. I want to just help us to understand uh, and encourage you today, uh, no matter what you're going through, stay with the word of God. Uh, continue to do the things that God have given you to do uh, as Christ was doing here uh, and he had a history he had a testimony coming through uh, this period of testing uh, uh, and so we have to be equipped uh, 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 with a testimony of where the Lord have brought us from so we can encourage people who are in places uh, and believing that there is no one to deliver them so Jesus is credible now is what I would call a credible witness uh, he has gone through some things uh, with with Satan himself but from childhood Jesus had maintained a sharp interest in the word and had even engaged teachers in the temple at Jerusalem. I want you to look at uh, Luke chapter 2 uh, verses 39 uh, through 52. So it was not uh, uh, unusual you know for uh, for Christ to uh, engage in, in, in this manner here but I want us to understand here uh, that Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit and was led by the Spirit uh, showing that the temptation was in the plan of God uh, right at the beginning Jesus faced the question of what sort of Messiah he was to be so this testing here uh, uh, as Luke gives us this account helped to reveal the character of the type of Messiah that Christ would be. He was able to endure because he was equipped to endure. Uh, the Holy Spirit was right there every step of the way uh, for this prescribed time period that God had uh, 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 allowed to come up on him and sometimes uh, uh, we like to get out of things that the Lord have allowed to come up on us and I, I, I am guilty of that myself uh, we don't like trials we don't like tribulations but I would just encourage you if you can't get out of the trial get a legal pad and a pen and begin to write down what you're learning from the trial uh, uh, begin to journal the things that God is teaching you and and, and begin to journal uh, how the Lord is developing you uh, and what type of Christian you will be if you think about ministry uh, and all of its facets, one of the things that happens sometimes in ministry is that we are overtaken. Uh, when the devil begins to tempt us, uh, begins to try us, and, and, and so sometimes it doesn't take long for us to turn away from the things that, uh, that the Lord have called us to do. But Jesus has to go through this because the Father has prescribed it. Uh, and so uh, but uh, by uh, Luke chapter 4 as we think about verses 21 um, through 27 by presenting uh, the rejection because this happens here beginning at uh, uh, verse 16 of Luke chapter 4 um, uh, that Jesus was uh, rejected uh, at Nazareth at the very beginning of his ministry so Luke highlights certain main characters of, of, of that ministry, the response of wonder at his teaching coupled with persistent unbelief uh, and rejection. So his ministry, Christ's ministry as the fulfillment of scripture is something that Luke uh, helps us to understand and also his concern for the poor and oppressed uh, and his ultimate aim of bringing Gentiles among the people of God and so other people need to be saved sometimes and I want you to think about this as a trial and this is something that the Lord has certainly taught me over the years sometimes the trial is not uh, even though you're going through it is not specifically for you let me help you with that uh, the trial uh, because other people are able to see you go through 
uh, uh, even though you're not particularly saying anything about it, people have a tendency to watch us go through things and how we manage our trials, how we stand, if, if we are still faithful in the midst of trial and tribulation. And I've had people over the years to, to, to encourage me, if you will, uh, as, as these people are praising Jesus uh, 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 for the things that, 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 uh, uh, that he's teaching, but look at what he's gone through. Uh, uh, and so sometimes people are, uh, need to see us go through. And the Father will allow you to go through things for the betterment of other people that he might draw those people not just through the good things that you do but through the trial uh, that you're going through. I hope I'm making sense for us today. Again, I, I want to keep emphasizing the fact of how God works as well as how uh, uh, the devil works. And we need to know uh, those two things. Uh, the question is asked here, Jesus retreated to the wilderness to fast and pray for spiritual power for ministry. Question here is what do you do to spiritually recharge yourself and I you know I was thinking about that and I was thinking about the the word sacrifice kept coming to mind to my spirit and when we want to get uh, rejuvenated uh, uh, and we want to grow in this thing called ministry and in the spirit and in the power thereof there will be sacrifice uh, we must understand that if we want to uh, go forward if we want to go higher if you will uh, then we need to think about sacrifice and sometimes we are not able to go forward we don't we don't uh, 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 we lack the power to go forward because we lack the sacrifice we don't want to give up anything we don't want to shed anything we want to stay where we are uh, and if I can just say this we don't want to go through anything uh, uh, but that's not how God works uh, uh, God allows us to go through things and I want you to think about how stronger you are now as a result of going through what you went through. Uh, I want you to think of how much bolder you are now as opposed to what you were prior to the trial. And so these trials have a tendency, uh, as James says, let it run its course, right, so that you lack nothing. And sometimes what is developing us, the prescription that God readily uses uh, with us, even as he did uh, with his own son is sacrifice right uh, Jesus went into to the wilderness uh, uh, he gave up something uh, he sacrificed he did not take what the devil offered him he did not take uh, the position that the devil offered him uh, he did not compromise himself I'm trying to help somebody he did not compromise himself uh, uh, even at his lowest uh, he could have eaten the devil's food because he was hungry but he chose not to do that he could have uh, uh, elected or selected or uh, agreed to the position that that the devil offered him but he chose not to do that he continually sacrificed of himself uh, for 40 days of fasting and praying and sometimes we are not able to go forward because we lack the uh, uh, the the effectiveness of a prayer life to go through we have to pray ourselves through situations even though we lack even though we don't have even though we are not in the position that we would like to be in there will be sacrifices that we need to make if we're going to grow in this thing and in in this sacrifice of giving up uh, uh, what we uh, might want to have that we rely on God and and the Holy Spirit will quicken us and empower us in that void of your life or in that experience that we might be uh, uh, better Christians that we might be stronger Christians when we rely more on him than the things that we think that we need to go forward I hope I hope I'm helping somebody today because these callings they they are a reality uh, uh, and, and sometimes when we think about giving our lives to Christ uh, uh, there will be sacrifices right that we might take on this 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 attitude and this relationship and this fellowship there will be sacrifices so as we move on to uh, our second outline uh, that talks about the prophecy to proclaim this is taken from Luke chapter 4 verses 17 through 19 and again I want to read this um, from the NIV translation 
The Bible says that the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Jesus is in the synagogue now. Uh, let's remember that. So he unrolling it, he found the place where it is written. Verse 18 said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he uh, has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free. And verse 19 says to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Let's think about Christ going through this trial. Right? For 40 days. And coming out of this trial. This testing. Jesus goes into the synagogue. Number one. He reads from the word. From the prophecy. Uh, from the prophet Isaiah. This is relevant because. Uh, his coming is purposeful. Uh, Christ is fulfilling uh, everything that the Lord had prophesied uh, in the Old Testament that he would do. And so he quotes uh, what the Lord said about him from Isaiah. He found uh, in the place where it is written in Isaiah uh, that Isaiah wrote about Christ, right? And so Jesus found that place in in the word and the law and he read this of of his purpose he read this about his anointing he read this about his purposes of being in ministry and this is important for us all of us uh, uh, that 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 are in ministry today why are we in ministry what did the Lord call us to do and did the Lord anoint and appoint us to do the things that we are professing and proclaiming that we are doing and so uh, and this is something that has been established in the Old Testament through Isaiah and Jesus has found this place uh, uh, that is concerning him and his coming and he says that the Spirit of the Lord is on him we know that to be a fulfillment from Luke chapter 4 uh, verse 1 right and so but this anointing is for a specific reason this anointing what I like about this and what I found about this is that it's for other people it doesn't say uh, Jesus doesn't say I'm anointed for me I'm anointed to build myself up this anointing is about other people it's about poor people it's about prisoners it's about blind people. It's about oppressed people. So this serves to help us to understand we should be purposeful in ministry about helping other people. Our lives are no longer our own. Uh, and we, lo we know that about Christ. Uh, he, was a, he wasn't dying necessarily for himself. He was dying for us. He was dying for other people. He came for other people. He shed his blood for other people. And so this is very important. So if you have a ministry that's self-serving, you might want to check that out. You might want to check out who actually called you into ministry that you would uplift yourself and forget those who, who are also God's people. And we learned here that God was concerned about not just the nation of Israel but through prophecy even through Isaiah God was concerned about Gentiles other people outside of the nation of Israel so salvation needs to be inclusive whatever we are doing needs to involve needs to include other people it needs to involve those who are hurting it needs to involve those who are suffering not just uh, physically but 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 have spiritual dilemmas in their lives because they have no fellowship with the father through his son Jesus Christ they have no fellowship with God in the pardon of their sins and so this is very relevant so Jesus is reading something here in the synagogue and I think it's huge that he's in the place where these religious people need to understand this is why I came it's for other people so uh, if we look at this thing right uh, uh, as Jesus proclaims the year of the Lord's favor uh, we want to understand this that through his death and resurrection Jesus inaugurated inaugurated the day of salvation I want you to look at 2nd Corinthians uh, chapter 6 verse 2 in which the gospel is preached all over the world and those who are estranged can find peace in him I also want you to look at Ephesians chapter 2 uh, verses 12 verse 13 also Ephesians chapter, th uh, chapter 3 
verse 5 and then 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 10. So we see purpose here. We see the Spirit of God moving. We see this anointing. And we see that God is concerned about other people. We should never let the devil uh, 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 cause us to think or believe that God is not concerned about us. We should never think or believe that God does not love us. Look at this prophecy here that's being unfolded here uh, 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 that has been laid out by Isaiah. Jesus has found it at the beginning of his ministry. He goes back. He gets the purpose that God sent him, that God prophesied of him coming into the world, and he lets everybody know, this is what my ministry is going to be about. You don't have to print it on a business card. You don't have to print a flyer, but be about the thing that God has called you to do. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me, right? to proclaim good news to the poor. What's the good news, right? What would be good news for somebody who is struggling in sin, who is struggling in, in compromising themselves to the devil? What would be the good news except Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? And so uh, 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 to the poor, people who are poor in spirit, people who are poor in a relationship, and, 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 and they're also poor in things, right? If you look back at Leviticus chapter 25, uh, uh, and so, as I said earlier, the Lord wanted to rid the land in this year of Jubilee of exploitation. And we have a lot of that going on today where we are being exploited uh, at the hands of other people. But what if these people were saved and anointed and wouldn't do those things because the Lord didn't call them to exploit the poor. God called them to set things in order, to put things right, to treat one another as uh, he would have it to be done. And so uh, uh, God has sent me, Jesus says here in this prophecy here from Isaiah, has sent me to proclaim freedom, right, for the prisoners, not just those who, uh, as Israel was uh, in their mili military campaigns, they were often prisoners of their enemies, but, but God wanted to set us free. And many of us today are prisoners of the devil we we are locked up we are shackled and God came through the word of God through his son to set you free to tell you today you don't have to live like that you don't have to wallow in that you get up out of that thing and you believe on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and, and, and you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead just like Romans chapter 10 helps us understand and the Bible declares you will be saved this is good news for uh, 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 prisoners and recovery of the sight of the blind some of us don't understand the word of God we don't understand the purposes of God but through uh, uh, the preachers and the teachers of God we want you to recover today we don't want you to be blind about the purposes of God we don't want you to be uh, blind about the reason why Jesus came into this world and so we have to present the word of God to God's people where they can understand it right so they can recover from this thing of of I don't understand or, or, or I I can't see what the Lord is saying to me. Uh, uh, Christ is here, right, to do do these things for us. And, and as we said, this is to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So as Jesus stood in the synagogue before friendly faces who had praised his authoritative teaching, he read from the scroll from the book of Isaiah. Jesus stood firmly clothed with boldness. Hear me good, church and humility to read from Isaiah's prophecy. Specifically, Jesus read from Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2. So, uh, as we, we, you know, we could go on and on with this thing, uh, but we get it now that, that, that the weight of the text is further expanded with Isaiah's summary of the anointed one's mission, specifically to preach the gospel or good news, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to captives and recovery of the sight of, of the blind, and to liberate the bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I don't know if we need any more clarity of those of us who serve in ministry. We have a mandate now that is about other people. We have a mandate to cut straight lines with the word of God. Uh, and I know that, that, that we hear a lot about blessings today. And, and certainly that is a part of the messages. 
But the greatest gift that we can receive from the Lord is his son, Jesus Christ, and the salvation thereof. Uh, we don't want to miss that uh, in our declaration or our proclamation of the word of God. And Jesus doesn't miss that. He comes right out of the gate, if you will, right out of the wilderness, establishing what his ministry is going to be about. Question here, make a list of persons you know who need to receive the good news of Jesus Christ. Uh, where and with whom will you begin sharing? How will you make the decision? I just wrote two things. You, ought, you want to be prayerful about that, how you uh, uh, proclaim, and you want to be led by the Spirit of God, right? Uh, 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 rely on God to give you and create the opportunity and equip you with a testimony. Uh, uh, you'll be more bolder uh, when it's time to speak uh, through the trial. You'll be more humble uh, as, a, as trials have a tendency to do to us. It brings us uh, out of space, if you will, and it grounds us to help us understand uh, and trust and depend on the Lord to bring us through. And so then we begin to uh, minister to other people. We know how to. We're coming uh, from a place where we have empathy for other people and we understand the plight of the sinner. I'm trying to help somebody to understand that ministry is very purposeful and is very strategic. And so when people are down, we don't want to kick them and we don't want to browbeat them, but we want to love them in a way that they get up off of their uh, 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 seats and get on their feet and stand and accept the good news of Jesus Christ as prescribed. And then our last outline is entitled The Platform uh, to Proclaim. Uh, this is again coming from Luke chapter 4 verses 20 through 22a and again from the NIV translation. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue uh, were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Verse 22, All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. So, in an impressive and quiet yet powerful manner, Jesus, after reading the text, closed the book or rolled up the scroll and just simply sat down as everyone in the room fastened their eyes on him in anticipation of some exposition of the text. To really grasp what has occurred, you must visualize the scene. Uh, Jesus quite possibly has been out of the area for several months. He returns to his hometown and appears to volunteer to read. After reading the text, he does not continue to stand and expound on the text, but he takes a seat. Only master senior teachers would sit and expound on the word. He sits as one of authority. The people watching with focused expectation indicated that they desired to hear from him, not necessarily those who may have routinely been the ones to explain the text to the people. Surely he who has been teaching with power and authority along with a few miracles including uh, the turning of the water into wine. That's in John chapter 2 verses 1 through 10 but I want to make a couple of points about this Isaiah 61 and if you look at it and where Jesus uh, I was just want to talk about why he uh, closed the book if you will as the King James Version would say because this is the advent uh, uh, that we want to focus on there are actually two advents uh, in Isaiah chapter 61 uh, in those one two verses uh, the second advent deals with judgment, uh, but this first advent is the one where Jesus focuses on this acceptable uh, year. Uh, the favor of God uh, is timely. Uh, we want to focus on that because this is the advent that we are dealing with today, and we're still preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. We understand that there's a second advent pending. In other words, the Lord is coming back again. And so we don't want to be uh, at that second advent trying to get ready. We want to be ready. So we have this first advent to deal with. And we have uh, the prescription here that Jesus is teaching that he is all about. And I want us to understand that that has been fulfilled in our hearing. Uh, Jesus has come already, right? He has come and he has preached. He has left assignments with his disciples. And then he ascended right back into heaven and now we are waiting on that second advent 
but while we're waiting on that second advent we're dealing with that first advent and so we still have to address God's people in this first advent uh, we still have to use the grace that has been given to us and the, the, the administration that God has bestowed upon us and charged at our hands. We have to use this because we know that that second advent is pending. Then what we're preaching now needs to be is, is time sensitive. Uh, uh, we, we, we have to help people to understand that uh, 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 the day, the day you hear my voice, saith the Lord, hard night not your heart we have to also emphasize to people that grace is not given to us day by day to exploit it but it's given to us that we would adhere to the things that God has given us in a timely manner that's the the thing that 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 I want us to think about here that what God is prescribing and offering to us is time sensitive it's very important that we come to Christ now it's very important that we be as Jesus was as a boy about his father's business. We need to do that now. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. This very hour is the time we need to say yes to the Lord and accept the forgiveness, accept the anointing, accept the rebirth, accept the things that God has come to do in our lives. We don't want to put to uh, today or for tomorrow because uh, tomorrow is not promised to any of us but the day you hear my voice said the Lord hard not your heart give your life to him today accept this advent accept this at uh, uh, this this uh, uh, prescription here accept this remedy here for what ails you today and this is the thing that I I, I, I love about this text because particularly as we read uh, 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 in Luke chapter 4 verses 17 through 19 if you look at the people that, are, that have been broken by society uh, have been broken by sin look how important you are to God look how critical you are to the administration of Jesus Christ don't ever let anybody tell you that you are not important to God uh, 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 so we should remember this today as we move forward that God loves you he is concerned about you and what you are going through and what he did to address what you're going through was to send his only begotten son so you could go through him and get into a relationship where you could feel better on the inside as well as on the outside that this remedy here would deal with oppression it would deal with depression it would deal with a lack of, of hope in the world it would deal with uh, the lack that you don't have of the Spirit of God or the power working in your life it addresses us in an internal way that we can go forward that we can be healed from the inside out but we have to give our lives to Christ as a remedy uh, 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 for what ails us and if we don't do that then we will stay poor in spirit we'll stay broken we'll stay prisoners right we'll still be a uh, 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 devoid of understanding we will lack spiritual power in other words as Jesus said in John chapter 15 I believe verse 6 apart from me ye can do nothing so all of the things that we endeavor to do without Christ though they we could mount up all kinds of uh, 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 of physical things all kind of temporal things but we brought nothing into this world and surely we will take nothing out of it but the grace of God and the salvation of God uh, will follow you uh, to the place where God has prepared uh, for those who love him and who believe him and so I want us to understand here we have internal issues that God wants to address and if we would embrace this Savior and embrace the ministry that he brought to those uh, who are in such need uh, of, 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 of this kind of recovery if you will I want you to know that Christ is the answer today uh, I also want to give you Matthew chapter 5 verses uh, chapter 5 and chapter 7 that Sermon on the Mount I want you to look at that as well but I hope trust and pray that we've given you something to think about today it's a very broad deep lesson today I enjoyed it because it, it demonstrates that God loves me that God is concerned about what's going on with me on the inside as well as what's going on with me on the outside as we saw in Leviticus chapter 25 let's pray 
Father God, we are humble today. We thank you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. We thank you for this brand new year that you've established us. We saw one go out, one year go out, and a new one come in only by the grace of God. But Father, we realize there's so much brokenness around us. There's so much going on in our lives today. And Father, we just want to lift up each and every one in prayer today. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for the remedy for what ails us today. Thank you for the blood that was shed for our sins. Thank you for the life that Jesus brought and he gave it up so that we could have a fellowship fellowship with you that we could have this this right to the tree of life we thank you for your word that tells us everything that we need to know father we want to continue to pray for our country today and other countries around us who are also suffering in this pandemic we want to pray for the leadership we want to pray for every believer today every administration every ministry and we pray that you would give them a mind to do the things that are consistent with your word and consistent with your promises to your own people in the name of Jesus Jesus. Father, we want to continue to pray for those on the front line, all of those first responders. We want to pray for all of the medical staff and, and those who are laboring, oh God, to and, 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 and putting their own lives uh, lives in harm's way that they might save others. We thank you for each and every family today, and we know you're going to continue to spare us and to keep us, and we continue to lift each and every one in prayer today, as well as what they're going through. And we call it done. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen. So again, until such time that the law would permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.